Welcome back, folks, to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. I'm here with Charlie Barons. We are here at Ted's Bar in St. Louis again. We St. Are Louis, my guy. St. Saint, Louis. St. Saint, Saint Paul. St. Paul. Paul Miles. I might have had a concussion since the last episode, yeah, Charlie. Yeah, jeez. But geez, we're back, geez. folks. And, Charlie, I'm going to hop right into it. I got a question for you. Okay. The question is, does this make me... A bad father. Oh, bad daddy. I like it. Cause so, that's, that's coming up, folks. If, yeah, if you're gotta, just sticking in, uh, checking out an episode, you didn't know Miles is pregnant. And um, well, I'm not pregnant. My wife is pregnant. I just said that facetiously, but so, I I actually don't know if people get that serious or not about that sort of stuff. Like when you say we're pregnant, not just you're pregnant. I'm like, dude, you're not doing shit right now. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I never bought into it, but yeah, I don't know. And, and that right there is not gonna make me look better here. No. Charlie. All right. So what'd you do, bad daddy? So I'm um, doing June, which is, as you know, peak golf season. Ah. And so I asked. And if on my paternity leave, if it's okay, if I sneak out and golf a little bit, wait, 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 wait. does that make me a bad father? First of all, your paternity leave from the company you own? Yeah. We got a policy. Yeah. What's the policy? Dad gets two weeks off after a kid's born. That's it? Just two weeks? Yeah. That's pretty good, actually, from what I understand. Is it? I, I uh, Right now, it's like you get like six weeks off and you get to choose the time and and it can happen within six months of having the baby or something. I think it's actually six months you get off. For who? Uh, just all companies these days. It's new uh, regulations. You know. uh, we give three months maternity leave. Three months maternity, two weeks paternity. Yep. Ah, that's probably good. Honestly, I was just making all that up. So listen. So it doesn't make me a bad father. A bad dad that you want to take some of your time off to spend with your kid and to go um, golf. Miles, I think you framed that question up the wrong way. Hey, we'll see ya. Um, first of all, you shouldn't have even asked. All you got to do is you get uh, one of them swaddling deals. And then you're out there swaying. Well, that was so it didn't go over too hot when I asked it. What did she say? She was kind of like, really? You know, that was kind of the first. And then I was like, well, you guys could just come with. Yeah. Didn't love that either. Miles, you just got to drill a car seat to your golf bag. And then, um, you know, you can walk with you can do a walking style deal. And it's basically you're taking your kid on walk, yeah. you know, well, they with make, your golf clubs. They make a th- like a stroller now that has a compartment underneath where the kid sits. Yeah. You put all your clubs. Bang, dude. I'm. G- ha- ha- do you have one? No, I. I but I got to get one. Now. I'm going to get one for your uh, for your deal. That I'll get one great. for you and Ann. Yeah. The problem is I don't love walking. Well, of course, but so. it, but Miles, it, that You're thinking side cart though. I'm, th- oh, a, a side cart <laughs> that would be great. A little side cart for your golf cart or a golf seat for the golf cart. Yeah, or, or a, a baby seat for the golf cart. Yeah. So then I kind of negotiated. <sighs> she actually, at first, she thought I was joking. Yeah. Then she could tell it was a genuine question from me. Then she said, "I think she's. I think she agreed upon one one golf session per week." Okay. Which is a starting point. And I can always wiggle from there, you know? Yeah. I think, um, are you trying to golf with other people or are you just trying to get out, do an early morning? Just, yeah, just, you know, kid goes down for a nap. Let me sneak out for nine holes. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a long nap, but, (laughs) you know. I mean, nine holes, I can do an hour and a half. Can you? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, so the question is, Charlie, does this make does that make me a bad father? No, I just think you screwed up in how you asked it. How should I have asked it? You shouldn't have asked at all. You should have said, yeah, me and the little guy, we're going to go for a walk and then just go for a walk with the little guy on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, technically. I mean, and that's a good point. I should have framed it in that I want, I just want to do stuff with my little guy and I can't wait. Yeah, you can't can't wait. wait. I'm absolutely chomping at the bit to teach him new skills. Now that here, here do I do see a problem. Um, If he's out there and he gets hungry, you know, you don't, your nipples don't do that. And so you might need a bottle of some sort. I, but then there's the question of bottle feeding or breastfeeding. And I don't know which Bev way Cart you're going. girl's got to be able to warm it up for me. Hey, you got some milk in there? You know? 
<laughs> yeah, I think that might be frowned upon to ask yeah, the Bev yeah. Card girl if she's got some breast milk <laughs> for you. I think okay. that, that I think I bring the breast milk what? and then she heats it up for me. There, <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> I, I can't even get mad at you because I really set myself up on that the one. The problem is, Charlie, there's some guys out there who probably have asked that. I, I've yeah. never... Old guys and Bev car girls, they are so disrespectful. I know. They don't mix well. I was a caddy for a while. I saw that in, in real time, man, in real time. Um, well, can I ask you this? Have you ever seen a guy out on the golf course with a baby? Is that something that people do? Yeah. Yeah, but usually they're like... At least a year old. <laughs> okay. You know, bringing a newborn to the golf course, I think it's pretty frowned upon. Yeah. Plus, you got to have the sun shield on them, right? Because isn't um, sun really a big issue yeah. for babies these days? You know, it, I feel like new parents have all these other things that our parents weren't really thinking of. That's an old guy thing. Now, to say, I think but. what's going to happen, Charlie. Yeah. Is and I think there's probably some dads out there would say this, that I say this now before the kid's born. But then once the kid's born, you're not going to want to leave anyways. I think what's going to happen. Well, I, but uh, then it's, I'm setting myself up being like, you know what? I love our child so much and I want to hear, be here to support you. I know I had negotiated one golf session a week. I don't need it. I want to be here to support you. It's uh, great leverage. No, I, yeah, I, f I feel like you did this intentionally now. No, I didn't, but it's kind of turning out to be a good scenario for me here. Why don't you just make a little nine uh, par three in your backyard? I could. A little chipping area. Yeah, that could be fun. You get a zero turnout that could get you out on the lawnmower, you know, and then just put some uh, AstroTurf on your back deck. You know, mm -hmm. you got a little um, thing going on there. That could be nice. It'd be bad if I sculled one into a house, though. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, <sighs> them, that they shouldn't have built their house by your golf course. So, Charlie. Yeah. So does this make me a bad dad? No, Miles, you're not a bad dad. You're not a bad dad. Not a bad dad, folks. Not a bad dad. <laughs> not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's well. take some callers. Hello. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. This is Charlie. Who's on the horn right now? Hey, Charlie. My name's Greg. I'm from uh, New Glarus. Oh, Greg from New Glarus. Miles knows all about New Glarus. A long time ago, Miles made a video comparing Bush like to uh, Spotted Cow. And yeah. yeah, they're huge fans of me over at uh, New Glarus. They love it. Yeah, we've uh, we've seen that video for sure. What do you think of it? Uh, well, not my favorite. Not my favorite. You know, you're all entitled to your own opinion, but uh but it, you know, I'm a little biased, I guess, just like you probably are too. Yeah, I guess that was the first video of mine that ever uh, got any traction, and uh, ever since then, I've been trying to repair my relationship with Wisconsin. So, um, so he became. Well, we're always ha happy to have you back here and, and sharing a spotted cow. Or I don't well, think that that's the case. The I too. was I was told very uh, sternly that that was not okay. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But uh, why don't you tell us what's on your mind? Yeah, well, um, you know, I called in because uh, I feel like you two, who are basically the uh, the most popular widespread ambassadors for Midwestern culture, have been overlooking, possibly ignoring, a very large facet of Midwestern culture, which is, of course, the state dance of Wisconsin, polka. You know what? You're right about this. Honestly, you're you're a thousand percent right. I wouldn't say I've overlooked it completely in that, you know, we always do roll out the barrel, yeah. beer barrel polka uh, at the Packers games. And I've, I've done a video with that before. But me and Miles collectively, especially on this podcast, we've neglected the polka we've community. Ne we've neglected. I, I, we'll throw our hand up and say... We did. We're doing wrong by the polka community. How can we repair this damage? Yeah. It, uh, well, I'm glad you asked. This year is the 30th anniversary of Wisconsin adopting polka as its official state dance. You did you know that that was the official state dance? You know, I knew it was the official state dance. I thought this was the 29th year, but <laughs> oh, now out of here. now that I know for sure it's the 30th year, what day is it? Remind me of that again. 
Ooh, uh, I think it's April 24th. Okay, so that's coming up. I can up. remember off the top of my head. It's almost yeah, here. Yeah, it's coming up. And uh, it'd be a great excuse to, you know, roll out the barrel and expose this uh, beautiful uh, musical form to the uh, wider world. It is a beautiful musical form. How are you celebrating the polka day? Um, well, I think there's something going down at the Capitol or downtown on the square in Madison. And uh, my friend is a polka DJ here in, in Wisconsin, and she's definitely going to have some, some big events, big plans. So I'll be kind of following her lead. Can I ask, do you play polka? Do you dance polka? Um, what's your, what's your, when did you first get introduced to it? Tell us your story. Oh, I got first introduced to polka as a, as a little kid, you know, mom would take me to the linoleum floor in the kitchen to, to learn how to, how to dance. And, uh, been a fan ever since, you know, going down to the Essen house in Madison to hear it on Friday nights, once in a while, sharing a boot of beer. Das boot. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And then here in New Glarus, you know, we have a lot of polka, a lot of classic, uh, polka bands from the area. So, just something you kind of grow up with. Yeah, it really is. And it's sort of a staple of, you know, um, Wisconsin culture, fish boils, fish fries, bars. I remember my first uh, polka exposure, Charlie. What was that, Miles? Very vividly. What was it? So um, being a Catholic boy growing up, yeah, you know, when we would go to the lake, we would go to the Catholic church on Sundays in the lakes area. And we showed up one day and found out that it was the polka mass. Oh, you went to a polka mass. Yep. Didn't know. We walked in. They started playing music. And I tell you what, I don't know if we've ever sang louder in church. <laughs> that accordion started going. I started yeah. getting a little juking and jiving going. And. Boy, were we praising the Lord that Sunday morning. I can imagine. Have you ever been to a polka mass? Yeah, I, I haven't been to a polka mass myself, but uh, I've heard that they're, they're, they're quite the uh, experience. Yeah, I felt like I was in one of those cool hip churches that play like uh, the pop music. It was but better almost. I mean, now was there any way, way better, way better. Yeah. Yeah. Now was there any, um, dancing miles going on? I, I must confess. I've never been to a polka mat as myself either. You kind of jealous. I'm honestly very jealous. Yeah. It, it, it was. Yeah. There was, a, I mean, it's Catholic church, so you're not going to be, you know, doing the worm in the aisle. Right. But, uh, there was a little bit more swaying a little going sway. on. Yeah, a little sway, a little okay. head bobbing. And why not? You know, there's a lot of ways to worship God. And uh, polka, you, every time you play polka, there's an angel that starts to, to tap their toes. And I think that's what we all got to remember. I mean, remember. polka is just a, yeah, polka is just like a happy music, man. You put on some polka and you can't help but like tap your toe a little bit. You smile. You know, there's, there's, uh, there's just something about it. It's infectious, you know, especially you have yourself a fish fry on Friday night. You go back to your friend's place, uh, pour some old fashions, get a game of euchre, sheep's head going, put some polka on the record player. It's just a, it's just a good time, good social music with friends, and it's a great way to, uh, you know, tap into a, a rich uh, musical heritage here in Wisconsin. And I think Charlie. Your next album should be a polka album. You've All done polka. the bluegrass already. Been I know. There, done that. Why don't you flavor in a little uh, polka in there? You know, my brother does know the accordion a little bit, so I feel like that that is uh, that should definitely uh, happen. It should. And uh, I am a little embarrassed we haven't brought up polka on this podcast uh, yet. But you know what? There's always time to do the right thing. So it sounds like you're kind of yeah, an expert no, I, I, when it comes to polka. Why don't you give us uh, some tips and tricks? If I want to get into polka dancing on a regular basis, what do I got to be looking out for? I mean, you should be able to find polka nearby, wherever you are in the Midwest. It shouldn't be that far away, but what you're going to want to do is look for your nearest VFW, um, maybe uh, church basement, 
uh, you know, dance halls. Uh, Sunday afternoons tend to be popular with the older crowd, uh, but festivals, you know, bring in some of the younger folks like myself. And, uh, and then you can just listen to it on the radio, too. And as far as dancing goes, you know, there's fancy steps you can learn if you're really into it. But really, it's just if you can count to two and rock back and forth with a partner, that's pretty much the gist of it. Keep it simple and just have fun. Yeah, you kind of uh, how how can people dance the polka? I don't know if, you know, this is the easiest way to tell people, but um, you you pretty much were doing it right there. So what what kind of tips do you have for people who are looking to get into polka? Maybe they'll watch a YouTube video after this, get the steps down. But how would you describe uh, the polka dance? The most basic version okay. of it. Yeah, you got to grab you got to grab a partner, bring him in close. And then as the music's playing, you just follow the beat. Uh One, two, one, two. Jumping back and forth between your two feet. That's that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple thing. It's a beautiful dance because you can do it while you're pretty drunk. So, um, yeah, you can. Is it kind of a happy feet situation (laughs) when you're saying one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or what? Yeah, no, I, I'd say that's, that's a fair assessment for sure. Yeah, and then you just kind of slowly spin in circles while you're doing it. Yeah, you can spin circles, rock back and forth, whatever you want. You can, you know, if, if you've uh, you yeah, can hook if you've arms. seen people at some of these festivals, it's it's pretty free form, I'd say. Yeah, it's pretty free. For, it has to be in the if, when it comes to combining the Midwest and dance. You know, you're you're getting all realms. You're getting the <laughs> professionals. You're getting the hammered people. The people who have never done it. It's a whole thing. Like you look at a a wedding, and that you, you'll see it right there too. Um, you got a favorite polka song you like to throw on the the ox? Oh man, there's there's so many great polkas about the city of Milwaukee and specifically drinking in Milwaukee. Um, for example, the Milwaukee polka. Uh, you know, there's there's just a really a lot of fun music out there. And, you know, I'd, I'll, I'd, I'd like to plug my friend DJ Shotsky, who has a polka show every Sunday evening. Uh, she always plays a lot of good favorites. Well, shout out to DJ Shotsky. And, uh, you know, we are big fans on the Bellied Up podcast of DJ Shotsky. And um, all the way right home from St. Paul here back to Fargo, I'm going to just blast DJ Shotsky on the, DJ on the Shotsky. car and see if Ann divorces me by the end or not. You know, and that's a true test of love. I you think know? Ann is going to fall in love with it um, by the time you get just outside of the greater Twin Cities area. We're filming in the Twin Cities right now. Anne is Miles' wife, if you're not up to date on that. but um, Oh, sure. Oh, sure, yeah. Now, uh, how old are you, let me ask? I'm uh, 36. You're 36. Okay, so, you know, polka is one of those things that does favor itself toward the older generation. How do you think we're going to get yeah. these new young bucks into the polka? Do you think we're going to need some uh, polka DM like EDM with polka? Do you think they're going to need to combine it with a new music in order to bring it into popular culture? Or is the thing about polka that it always stays the same? I think, uh, I think it's a two prong approach, Charlie. You know, you got some bands that are, uh, kind of go in, like you said, the, the fusion route. You know, there's a band called the Polkaholics, which is basically like a punk band playing polkas on guitar. And, uh, you know, switch it up, play with like a dance beat. Sure, why not? Um, but then again, you know, you and Miles can be out there as polka evangelists <laughs> talking about the beautiful history and rich culture of, of uh, the Midwest and how polka plays a part in that. We just were polking when you were ta- teaching us to dance. Miles grabbed me by the hip and he brought me in close. You know, I thought Ann was going to get jealous. So we're already there. On, I think uh, it's going to take one gigantic artist to do a polka album. Then it's going to go to the moon. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift or Beyonce. To do a polka. You know what? Beyonce just did a great country album. Maybe Beyonce's next move is, is polka. That's all it takes. Yeah. Maybe Taylor Swift could. Maybe Taylor Swift. I mean, is Kansas City part of the Midwest? That's a that's a question to ask. Oh, oh yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I mean, if she's like going to be a Midwesterner now, maybe she could get into the polka scene too. You know what? 
Just this, just the way you called us, I think your next phone calls to T Swizzle, and uh, <laughs> you are the one really doing it. You're doing the Lord's work here, and we applaud you for it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm always one to 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 spread the the word, and uh, you know, it's not just an old man's game. You know, polka can be fun and and uh, good exercise and a good social lubricant, just like a good beer is. Uh, we're all looking for that social lube. That's what we're all looking for. Um, just some to cut through the awkwardness when you're walking into a bar or a thing. We're all just trying to be in the deal. And if you can dance, if and, you can polka. And no way, no better way to cut through the awkwardness than to cut a rug. I like that play on words there, Miles. I like that. And that's true. That is true. It's life advice for all of you out there. So. Thanks for calling in, man. This yeah. is great. I think uh, I think you called us out on our bullshit. We haven't been talking about polka music enough. Nope. One more time, shout out to DJ Shotsky. And- yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for taking the call, and hopefully you guys can uh, spread the word a little bit, play a couple tunes, and uh, get on the dance floor every now and then. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, thank you. And w- watch for deer and uh, keep your, uh, you know, keep your legs bendy. All right, keep stretching before you poke yeah, up, well, folks. Well, I, I, yeah, I suppose. So I uh, better be getting going. Yeah, well, watch for deer out there and tell your folks we says hi. <laughs> All right, you too. Thanks. All right, see, see you now. Charlie, I'll, I feel like let's say we were to put polka on in this bar right now. Yeah. There would probably be a lot of people being like, who the hell is playing this? But all it takes is for one person to own it mm. to get everyone else on board, right? If you and I got up and started jiving to the polka music, yeah, changes the whole vibe in the room to where they're like, oh, those guys are having fun. Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's not such an old art. Right. And I think that's what people like you put polka on. People put themselves in a, like a, you got to kind of be in the mood for it. You know, it's sort of got this festival vibe. It's got, you know, kind of old timey, but it's got a lot of similar. It's really the accordion, you know, and the boom, but the the kind of boom, 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 boom. You know, when you combine those two things, the thing is, um, there's a lot of uh, traditional Mexican music that that has similar, uh, Mm. a lot of similarities to um, polka. And uh, and that is starting to come into the mainstream like traditional Mexican music. So I, I do wonder if there's any hope for polka to do right it. Right around the bend. You know, we're just, just around the bend. Boom, That's it. Boom, 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 there you go, boom, Miles. Boom, boom, we'll boom, get you a bass boom. guitar and maybe you play in a polka band. No, no, no. Or a horn. Sweet deck on huh? Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who we got on the horn today? Uh, this is Randy. Hi, Randy. How you doing? Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Austin, Texas. Austin, okay. Texas. How long you lived there? Uh, just a uh, couple years now, a year and a half, something like that. So you're a transplant. Where'd you transplant from? The Baton Rouge area, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay. Well, cool. We got a little backstory, bit of the origin story. What's the capital of Louisiana, Charlie? Capital of Louisiana, please. Of course, I know Baton Rouge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Not. It's not Baton Rogue. Baton Rogue it's is not- a. It's a beautiful spot, Miles. It is a beautiful spot. Now, Randy, what brought you all the way over to Austin, Texas? Uh, a couple different things. Just looking for a little bit of a. Uh, I don't <clears throat> staying in the same career, but looking for a new job. And the girlfriend was looking for a place to go, and this is where we ended up. New beginnings, good deal. So, belly on up to this bar and and tell us what's on your mind, Randy. Well, I was hoping I could. You know, I'm a, a an early listener. I'm I'm just getting in. I think you know we're. 10 or 15 episodes in and enjoying everything that you put out so far. And Thank you'll have a, uh, this, this sponsor, this, this sweet farm. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I'm from the South. I don't, I don't have one of those. So 
So I was a little curious if you could uh, help me get the vibe of it, where I, where I could go to get the wheat farm experience down here. Yeah, so I think the broader question here is because Fleet Farm is something up here in the Midwest, and it's basically kind of a man mall situation where you have a bunch of really anything, but it's a heavy focus on tools, lumber, outdoors, yeah, fishing, hardware hunting. Hardware store is maybe a bad way to put it, you know? That's why we call it the man mall. It's, it's hardware it plus. It's hardware, but that's just a small portion of the whole thing. Yeah. So, Charlie. Yeah. I got you. Let's educate him a little bit here. Okay. What makes a great hardware store? Oh, yeah. What makes it? I think the first thing that makes a good hardware store is you've got to have, you got to have things in stock. You know, like I hate walking into a spot for the one thing I need and it's not there. So I end up leaving with a thousand other things I don't need at all. And on top of that, I got to go to another place. You know, yeah. so I love it when it's in stock and we all know Fleet Farms got that stuff in stock. So that's nice. Miles, uh, what's the thing that you need in a hardware store? My guy, I need, you know me, Charlie. I know this you. This needs to almost look like a grocery store as well. You With gotta snacks have snacks on snacks on snacks on snacks because, yeah, you're going for some screws. You're going for some lumber. But what you're really going for is an experience, and that experience is eating snacks. Can I also say on top of that, and, and Randy, I want to get your thoughts after I say this thing that I need, um, but what I want to see Every hardware store I go into is the key guy. I want there to be a physical person making my key. I understand they got robots that do it now. Okay. But there's nothing bad. I mean, I, I mean, imagine the trust that a, a, a community has to put in the key guy, you know, like it, for me to hand them the key and say, now, I know that says do not duplicate, but this one you can duplicate. Just trust me. Okay. <laughs> and he looks right back at me and he says, yeah, that'll be fine. You know, you can't just you have to know the key guy to have that relationship. Well, and with you him. also got to make sure if you're doing pulling that move, you got to make sure the key guy has been beaten down by life a little bit. Oh, yeah. If he's a new key guy and he's mm. eager. He's going to be a rule follower. He's not going to want to duplicate that. You're going to want to make sure that the guy who's working that day has clearly been beaten down. And he's going to sniff you out. I mean, he might literally Give you a sniff, you know, before he decides. But uh, he'll make the right decision at the end of the day if, if he's an actual key guy. You can't do that with a remote. Yeah, You can't do that with an AI robot making your keys. Ugh. Anyways, Randy, what do you think makes a good hardware store? Uh, so I've, I've always... Uh, I've, I've been to a couple places that have the key guy, and I'm, I 100% agree. You need to have that key guy because that's just a requirement, you know, that who else can you trust to make your keys? Uh, but, uh, I was, I'm curious, like, I think you need to have that guy who just knows everything, right? That like, you got the front register guy that you're like, Hey, I, I need this, like working on this project. And then they always yell to the back for, you know, Hey James, like what's, you know, we got this, you know what to do. Right. And then, you know, guy in the back's like, Oh yeah, they need this. Yeah. Yeah, and he usually gotta have that expert. Yeah, and he usually keeps he comes limping up to the front for whatever reason. The guy who knows everything's got a limp. Always got a limp. He's just you know, I don't know if he got <laughs> what happened, but uh You know something fell on him from the shelves up there. Yeah, or you know, he served time in the service and he's got a little lingering injury, you know. Those are the guys that you want in your hardware store who know everything about it. He's got a story about him, and he's definitely missing a finger. And sometimes it's the, the person who knows everything about the hardware store doesn't even work there. He's just a guy who spends his whole weekend there walking around and he knows the place like the back of his hand. He's a guy who's gonna shake your hand too. And then he's going to judge your hand for how soft it is. Yep. You know, Yep. like if your hand is, 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 uh, not softer than the guy who's you're shaking it at the hardware store. Uh, you know, you might have the wrong guy, you know, cause that's a guy, all the moisturizer in the world ain't going to take the calluses away. I think that you also need to have, obviously you need to have a good lumber yard, right? Good wood. Yeah, you need to have good wood. But on top of that, you need employees who are working in the lumber yard to be kind of, uh, I don't want to say badass, but kind of just don't really give a shit about the rules. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not a. They have fun. Let's say, yeah. and, and that could lead to some, you know, some bad wood, shall we say? Some uh, crooked but, wood. Some crook, crooked wood. Some splintered wood. But whenever you accidentally buy a piece of that, you gotta say, yeah. Uh, they're having fun well and i think that it's also the camaraderie that you're buying you're not just buying wood you're buying the camaraderie of the lumberyard guys who are driving around with forklifts whistling at each other running around whipping shitties maybe razzing each other on the radio stuff like that i think that the lumberyard guy needs to be cut from the same cloth as uh the tow truck guys Oh, yeah. God, I love it. Kind of same mentality. You know, a tow truck guy, he takes crap all day long, you know, and so when it's time to screw around, he's 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 kicking loose. That's very interesting. You brought up the tow truck guys in there, Miles. I like it. Randy, has this been helpful for you at all, or have you just been over there uh, chilling? Uh, it, it's been, been a little helpful. I'll, I'll need to make sure to, to keep my eyes out around. Like, I'm... Um, just have a Home Depot down the road, but that's just not the same experience. No, you know? you're not gonna. You're not gonna so. have a beaten down key guy. You're not gonna have the degenerate lumberyard camaraderie guys. You're just not gonna have that. Yeah, you're not they, gonna have a guy walking around with a limp. You're gonna have some millennial walking around with an apron on. You know. Yeah, we gotta get Home Depot on board with bringing the key guys back. I want to start a key guy union. I want to be the head of the key guy union. That's what I want. I want to represent all those key guys who are determining who gets into your house illegally. I want. I want to protect those guys. They are a dying breed, and it's too long. We're letting these freaking machines take their jobs. Who's gonna stand up for a miles? If not us, then who? I don't know. Yeah. Charlie Barron's with the key to success. That's going to be the slogan, right? I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And then think about the logo that we can have, like like a Illuminati with a bunch of keys making the, the Illuminati sign. Freaking awesome, just have awesome, AI created for you. It's a turnkey solution. Oh, really. sick. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's, now that's a job for AI. Have them do this stuff that's not important. You got this on lock, Charlie. Randy, is there anything you want to buy, sell, and trade before we let you go, guy? Uh, not really. I mean, there is a grill that's pretty much going to waste, but I we don't have anywhere to go with it right now. So, uh, don't have any any prices on that. The girlfriend wants to to move it, so I'll let her make that call if she needs to. She, she knows the number. She'll give you guys a call. Randy, I got one last question for you. Do you, All right. you know this is a safe space, right? I do. Is there anything you want to confess? We have a new bit called Midwest Confessional. Anything you want to get off your chest? They only know your first name and your location. You could be anyone. Could be any Randy from Baton Rouge who moved to Austin. <laughs> anything you want to say? Who's got a- yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a ton of those, but uh, no, I, I'm good for now. I appreciate it though. You know, it's. I'll take the time to get stuff off my chest when I need to. Damn, Randy. I thought we had a I thought we had a connection, you and I. I'll try with the next caller. <laughs> That's all right. Well, thanks for calling in, Randy. We appreciate it. And tell your girlfriend we say hi. And uh you guys ever vacation up to uh the Midwest. Uh we'll take you to a fleet farm, all right? Oh right, well, I'll tell you what, the my my girlfriend is a Midwest gal. She is from the Sun Prairie, Wisconsin area. No kidding. So we get up there every once in a while. Yeah, we'll get up there and get get to the fleet farm, my man. Yeah, it's, this is a recent discovery of mine. You know, she didn't take a ton of trips to the fleet farm herself. Uh, so whenever we dis- discovered the podcast and started listening, like I was like, "What? What is this magical place that they're discussing?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, it's totally a thing." I was like, "Well, we could have gone last time we were up there. Would have been nice to know." Well, here's your so, sign. Yeah, this is your sign. We can't wait to see you up here, my guy. Uh, it's going to be fun. All right. right. Thanks for calling in, Sounds Randy. Good. Of course. Watch your deer now. You too now. That good guy. One thing I forgot, Charlie. Yeah. Good hardware stores got to have guns. Oh, yeah. You got you to you have guns and you got to be like, can I actually buy that? Here? <laughs> you know? Here in North Dakota, you just hand them your license. They do a background Dude, check and you will waltz out of there. It's crazy. Poke out of there. I used to live in South Carolina 
And uh, I was getting a gun for pig hunting. Like, and I knew nothing. I, I had not gone pig hunting before. I, we were going to go with knives and the gun was just in case things got up, out of hand. And let me tell you this. If you're going pig hunting with knives and dogs, it's already gotten out of hand. <laughs> and I should not have been able to walk out of there with a gun in 20 minutes, dude. That's all it took. South Carolina, crazy place. Um, And, the, you know, like, I just, I'm not gonna buy guns every time I go there. I, just I like, like looking window, at them. window shopping. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a uh, holy smokes. I, you know what I like? I like. I also like window shopping holsters as well. Is that weird? Like, no, I get it. It's like, like, oh, like I have a nine millimeter gun and I have a holster. Do you have a nine? Yeah, I got a couple. Really? Yeah. Do you get to the range a lot? Uh, not recently, but we have gone a few times in the last year. You just have a nine for fun. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are, are you, do you actually think you're going to protect your home with that thing? I mean, I how probably. How a shot are you? I mean, it depends on how close we are. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should go to the range one time, you and I. Yeah, we should. I'm not. Um, uh, um, aim is never really my thing. So I, I have no business having a little uh, pocket pistol. But I, I like to miss with my shotgun plenty again. I, I got a recurve bow. What you need to do is get it. You need to get a. Uh, uh, you need to get a judge that shoots uh, shotgun wads out of the out of the handgun. Then you got a better chance of hitting. Something. Oh yeah, uh, like a sawed-off shotgun kind of a thing. <laughs> no, this is like literally a handgun that that's shoots. A, I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, I think that's illegal everywhere. <laughs> no, yeah, really. I've never seen someone shoot. I mean, one you, of, you can't. I don't know if you can hunt birds with it. No. But you can shoot clay pigeons and stuff. Oh, I've never used one of those. Sounds fun. They're pretty cool. A judge. Mm-hmm. How am I out of the loop on that? I've 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 seen it before. I've seen like uh, fun shotguns, um, but it's like a a bit. It looks like a kind of a sawed off situation, doesn't no, it? No, it looks like a handgun. Oh, one of those. Yeah, and it shoots like. They just look like small shotgun shells. What what kind of a what kind of shell it goes in that? Four ten. Four ten. Oh yeah, that's not that's well. You go uh, go uh, rabbit hunting with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, should we take another caller, Charlie? Let's do it, Miles. Charlie. Yes, Miles. This weekend, we we definitely didn't uh, pre-record this at all, so we know exactly what's going on in March Madness. We know the exact final. And your four Badgers teams. are in the final four. Bang, Let's go, yeah, go Badgers! And how are yeah. you going to celebrate them being uh, in the final I'm four? I'm going to tip on back some tippy cow because Wisconsin cows. Come to Tippy Cow. The, the the cows just walk right over this thing, put their teeth right there, zip, zip, zoom, put some booze in it, and then they close her up. That's how they that's do it. How the, that's how the sauce is made. That's how the sauce is made, ladies and gents. So when you are enjoying your favorite in the final four, make sure you're going to be drinking, drinking a little bit of that Tippy Cow. Mm, tip it on back. <laughs> Tippy cow. Cheers, Charlie. Cheers, Miles. Go, Boom. go Badgers. Go, go. <laughs> Sound like uh, Inspector Gadget. Go, go Badgers. Hey, folks, I got to tell you, this episode is brought to you by the award winning Nicolay Law, the Midwest go to for legal support, founded by our buddy Russell Nicolay and staffed by the family. If it's if life throws you a curveball, Russell's on your team and uh, he'll coach you how to hit that curveball. Yeah. Charlie got a curveball right to the top of the head. Top of the dome. And uh, garage door. I got an IBS from it, too. After uh, (laughs) uh, it's TBD. It's TBD. Traumatic brain damage. I forgot it was TBD. Uh well but, anyway and you got to be feeling pretty comfortable at this spot because you're in good hands. Over I'm in there good at hands. Law. Russell's gonna get me all the money I ever wanted for my IBS and TBD. If you think that Charlie isn't uh, looking at this situation and viewing it as his retirement plan, you're wrong. Just seeing the money rain, baby. That's it. And who do I have to think? I got Russell to think. So if you want to get all that money. Uh, from them insurance companies, them greedy bastards. Give Russell a call. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to? Hi, this is Tyler from Long Island, New York. Tyler from Long Island, New York. Yes, sir. Cool. 
What are you doing, doing Tyler? Where, what what are you banging, clanging around back there? Yeah, sorry, I'm at work. Where do you work? What, still now. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a delivery driver for UPS. So you've got a couple of us on here already. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got to get a brand deal with UPS. Uh, for how much we get the calling in, and we're also starting to wonder uh, if any of you guys actually work. You're always calling into this podcast. That's true. That is true. Yeah, that's very true. Oh, if you ever see any of us, though, we always have one AirPod in, so we're always chit-chatting with somebody, no matter who it is. Yeah, you got to. You got to keep the mind occupied. What's the weirdest thing you've ever uh, experienced as a UPS driver? Oh, my God. I absolutely love that question. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, the guy that you had call in the other week, uh, he's always having people scream at him when he's parked on the side of the road. That's absolutely a true thing. People they hate when you're parking there, the big truck. They hate seeing it in front of their house end of their block or whatever can't catch a break well and it may be, so, and this is I'm me not, just spitballing here maybe ups could try making the trucks look a little cooler i mean don't don't take this the wrong way but i don't know if i want a big brown truck hanging out in front of my house it'd be nice if you guys put like a mural on the side or paint it fun bright colors something like that yeah that would be that you don't like be, the patented brown I, I have nothing against it, but I'm just trying to spitball here. Maybe the, you guys get yelled at less I'm if you had, like, you had like puppies on the side or something. Who's going to yell at a truck with puppies? Oh, on the yeah, side? there you go. Why Why did they go with brown as the color, too? Did they just like get a bunch of free paint and they're like, ah, mix it together, see what happens? <laughs> I guess we're brown. Yeah, they probably went to the hardware store, the uh, the pre-mixed, pre-mixed section at the end for half off. They probably went with that. You know, somebody else had already designed the color. Who knows? Well, belly on up to the bar with us. Tell us what's on your mind. Oh, where are you guys at today? Oh, we're over at Ted's in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's a fantastic bar. Uh, Minnesota, they got okay. all day old style Pilsner 250, 11.5 ounces. I'm just reading the signs. Well, I wish I could join you, but you probably have to finish driving for the day first. Yeah, I suppose. Get some help for that one, I suppose. I suppose. Well, yeah, I was wondering because you guys were posting and they were taking calls and it was like damn near 12 o'clock and I'm on the Eastern time zone. And I was like, well, these boys are getting after it early. Yeah. You know, we are hard workers. We'll be, we'll, we're, we're clocking in at the bar at 11 o'clock. I was a little late. I was 11, 10, but I got hit in the noggin by a garage door. That's Charlie's story. even working at 11 a.m. when he's in cuss. So, yeah. So what's on your mind? There you go. Well, I was hoping to state my case. Oh, a state hey. your case. What state do you believe should be part of the Midwest? So my family's had a lake house up in the lakes region of New Hampshire for quite a few years. And every time I venture up that way on vacation, I always think that the lakes region of New Hampshire could be a part of the Midwest. Okay, state your case then. Why do you believe New Hampshire should be part of the Midwest? Well, here on Long Island, things are pretty fast moving. You know, a lot of fast drivers, fast service in restaurants, that sort of thing. But when you head up to New Hampshire, everything moves a little slower. You know, like store lines, waitresses, drivers. Everybody's chit-chatting with each other, seeing what's going on. You know, they take their time with everything, which seems like it would be very Midwest treat. Completely different from here where I live. That is very Midwest. Um, yeah. To, to, to just, you know... <laughs> When you're uh, trying to get yourself a drink and you got to have a full conversation about someone's family who you've never met and never will meet before you get yourself a uh, exactly. Miller Lite. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, Charlie, what I've noticed around here is um, if someone's walking too fast, you kind of go like, what's this hot shot up to today? Yeah, is he trying to get a workout in or did he just kill somebody? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're too busy around here, you probably just murdered someone. Yeah, we are suspicious of you if you're walking at a faster clip than a horse. If you're walking faster than a trot, we are suspicious about it. So so far we're off to a good start. What is the culture like in New Hampshire? Uh, there's definitely a lot more friendly conversation there than here in New York. Like here, uh you no, know, if someone says how you doing, it's just a greeting. Like nobody really cares how you're actually doing. It's just like a hello, 
But uh, up there, when somebody says, how you doing? Like, if I were to say that as a greeting, like, the person would be like, oh, well, actually not so great. It kind of launches into their own story. Whereas I was just trying to say hello. That's just like a greeting here. You know, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but I don't really care all that much about how you're actually doing. Yeah, well, that, um, they, and it, no one ever does, but they, they, they throw it out there and it's part of the, part of the tradition, you know? You, you just got to embrace it. Yeah. What's the, what, what do you guys well, do yeah. on the lakes up there? Well, there's definitely a lot of ice fishing, which I know is a big part of the Midwest. All right. Um, We've got point, town, the, pointless conversations, oh, go ahead, go ahead. pointless conversations and ice fishing. We are off to a good start. What do you like about the yeah. ice fishing up Every, there? Oh, personally, I've never been, you know, it's, for us, it's only a vacation house. So we're only really there when the weather's real nice. No, we'll go up once in a while in the winter, but uh, yeah, I haven't checked ice fishing off the bucket list yet. Now, what's the bar scene like? Because that's a key ingredient of this whole thing, Charlie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just got to my next point here. Now, there's a lot of small towns up there. They're all kind of settled around the lake, and then you'll have to go a good distance before you get to the next one. And each town will have, you know, the classic stuff, a post office, a courthouse, a church, and then they'll have about six bars. Which is uh, a classic thing of the Midwest, I know. But in the winter time, when all the residents go back to you know their their warmer areas, they're only there in the summer. I don't know who is keeping these bars in business, but there's at least six of them per small town. So that just seems very Midwest to me. I'll tell you this: each bar has six prized patrons that keep that sucker afloat all winter long. <laughs> Largely, they are the ice fishers. Uh, and they are coming in after a day on the ice, and they're just they're doing the Lord's work of supporting they the bar. They warm up somehow, Charlie. They do, and they come. They warm up externally and internally. Well, and that's a. I mean, you brought up a great point of the uh, bar to churches ratio has got to be good in a Midwest town. Sounds like New Hampshire has that. Do you think six to one is the prime I mean, bar great. to church ratio? That's great, ain't it? Yeah. I think that I'm I'm happy with that personally. Um, now so these, these six patrons are they just rotating bars? They're just all day, you know, in and out uh, from they, one they, to the they, other. They have their home bar. It's kind of like um, your church, right? You belong to a, you're a parishioner at a church, but if someone's having a baptism at another church or a wedding, you'll go over there. So it's not saying you you don't, but no, you're primarily supporting one. Uh, one, yeah. possibly two. Sometimes. I see. Yeah. yeah. Bar bar regulars are a lot like patrons at church. The offering plate is pull tabs and tipping the bartender. Mm -hmm. Communion is all the beers and cocktails that they're drinking. Mm -hmm. And when they're doing the sign of peace, that's when they're all catching up to see what they did since they saw each other the day before. Yes, exactly. And there's basically bars are just churches in the Midwest. They are. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're two are gathered in my name. And th that's what Jesus said in the Bible. It doesn't matter if that's a church or a bar. You know, my mom probably really disagrees with this, but she doesn't listen to my podcast, so it's all good. They're singing songs. Yeah, you sing songs. You play some polka. You got, you know, the, there's no um, organist, but there is a touch tunes. Or or if you're lucky, you got a jukebox. So, In some bars we found out here at Ted's, they have a confessional, Charlie. They, I'm starting to think that... Bars are just churches, you know, and when you put it like that, Miles, it increases your time in purgatory. But that's OK, because what is purgatory if not just a big bar before you get to heaven? That's right. You know, it's a pregame pregame. <laughs> exactly. Yes. The only thing on draft is, you know, uh, uh, what it, what would it be? What would be on draft? Bush light. Bush light. You think bush light? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not hell. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. I mean, it's not like they're. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is true. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So small towns, they got to have what is it? Seven churches, but some are in bar form and some are in traditional church form. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times bars or right, uh, well. churches will do uh, fundraisers. And they'll serve beer there because, you know, I played a church fundraiser and the, the priests were the bartenders. So, um, 
multi multi service industry. Hey, uh, to switch over, yeah, it's starting to sound like they're one and the same. Kind of. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I was just going to ask for ice fishing. Do you ever see them driving their car out on the ice? He's not there. They will do that. I know this year they've had a relatively warm winter. And are they, they still doing that this year? But if they're still driving their car out on the ice this year in this El Nino year where everything's hotter than hell, um, that would be a very Midwest move. I think we would need to know the amount of cars that go through the drink, but it sounds like there's a possibility of it. There's usually there's usually one per winter, whether they went too early or too late. Yeah. You know, when the ice is starting to get thin. Yep. But uh, yeah, you definitely see a lot of that. Okay. I know they fish for a lot of the same stuff in uh, Lakes region. They got perch and pike, trout. I know you guys have over there. Perch pike. They're a lot of the same fish. Yep. Yep. It's sounding very Midwest to me. Anything else you think uh, should be involved in this state your case? One more. There's a lot of uh, Native American history in the lakes region. So a lot of the lakes and uh, towns have very Native American names that like only the locals can pronounce. Yes. Like, uh, Give me a couple. Big, like the, all of Wisconsin's The big lake that we got that. Yeah, yeah. Wisconsin, I know, is big with that. But uh, yeah, you got Winnipesaukee, Winnesquam, Ossipee, Sunapee. Just very, you know, if you get somebody who's never been there before, they'll be pronouncing them wrong, and that's how you know they're out of town. Yeah, Which, uh, that that is very, very true. That uh, you're, uh, how did you say it again? Winnipesaukee. Winnipesaukee is the uh, the big lake up there. Winnipesaukee, the that's like our Winnebago or our Oconomowoc or. I, I like that. That is yes, a really is solid right. point. Solid well, Charlie, point. Charlie, you got enough evidence here? Ladies and gentlemen, it here, is here, time here, to hear the hear the. We welcome New Hampshire and the and, and the Great Lake of Winnesaukee. <laughs> Did I say it right? I don't know. Winnipesaukee, but it's got to be just the lakes region because I don't know if some of these bigger cities in New Hampshire. No, we're just gonna Western. group them all together. It's way easier. Cheers, cheers, New here he, uh -oh. here he. Welcome to the Midwest, New Hampshire. All right, well, sweet. Now I've been to the Midwest before. Yeah, Heck we're yeah. doing pretty well. I like it. Well, thank you for calling in. And uh, yeah, thanks for swinging into the Midwest, too. We're glad to have you. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Get yourself. I appreciate you guys having me. Remember to get to the bar, all right? Once a week. Yeah, yeah. At least later tonight when, when I'm off of work, you know, when I'm done driving, that's when I'll hit it up. I'll have my beer later for you, folks. Good deal. Smart. Sounds good. Thanks for calling in, man. We'll see you all soon. Right, see ya. Well, that's another state in the books, Miles, New Hampshire. I think that's a country song. There's another state in the no, books, no, Miles. No. <laughs> Bars are just churches. And yeah, that is. We should write it. We should. Bars, oh, bars. Kind of make it. Maybe we can make it like a, a polka hymn. Oh. A little oh. more, like a little mixed little polka and gospel together. Just combine all of this, huh? I oh. like that. I like that. Well, Charlie, how you feeling? That's another good episode of the Belly It Up podcast. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is another episode. I'm feeling great about it, Miles, and uh, it's just been it's been fun chit chatting with these folks. We've covered a lot of ground, and we hope that you all will cover your bartender's uh, rent with a tip. <laughs> Make sure you tip your bartender, folks. It's important, and uh, watch for deer. See you next one. Love you guys.